All right. Um, so I'm here today to talk about the IE developer tools. And one of the things that really excited me when I uh, found out that I was going to be giving a talk about them was the fact that um, at heart, I'm really a web developer. Like pretty much everybody who works on the IE team, I spend probably 80% of my day in the browser. Uh, either writing websites, debugging websites, like there's some aspect of the browser that keeps me there pretty much every day. So one of the things that's cool is I get to talk to developers about developer tools. So I'm really happy to be here and um, hopefully uh, one of two things will be interesting to you today. The first is I'm going to talk about the IE8 developer tools in the case that you haven't like ever played with them or something like that just to uh, hopefully give you something you haven't learned before because God knows I learned quite a few things when I was writing the presentation for this. Um, and the other piece is, hopefully we can talk about some stuff in IE9 that's interesting to you as well, because we've uh, continued innovating into the latest cycle of the product as well. So first I'm going to go over the IE8 uh, part of the dev tools. And first I wanted to go over the key points, kind of the, uh, the how, why, and point of why we did the dev tools to begin with. So I kind of see um, the main like, purpose behind the dev tools and the main rationale being um, we want transparency. Uh, Trident, which is sort of like the, the rendering layout uh, object model engine that we have inside IE, historically has been a little bit of a black box. And you could make an API call in, you could get data back out, but the actual uh, rhyme or reason behind uh, how you could get that data was not 100% clear. So in IE8, we did a lot of work to like wire up these dev tools. The hope being that whenever you did choose to make a um, to make a call to Trident, you could actually get data back and see exactly why your calls were resulting in the results that they did. Um, we also wanted to make sure that the cycle, and believe me, I completely empathize with people who have used Notepad in the past to um, sort of write their markup, write their code, store it on a server, all that good stuff, um, to just make sure that all of your development can really take place inside the browser. And the end result of that is the fact that hopefully you can end up spending more time adding features to your applications, making them rich, making them interactive, making them useful to your users and less time fixing weird uh, browsers uh, quirks between the various browsers out there, um, i.e. being one of them. So the first piece of this is HTML and CSS, which is, of course, the building blocks of the web. And we wanted to make sure that you had a very clean, very intuitive, very easy way to go in and inspect an element and see, one, the rules that apply to that element, and two, exactly where they came from. So we sort of have like a box model um, way to see exactly what rules are applying where, as well as um, exactly what styles are applying to an element at a given time, whether they've been overruled by a, a style rule that's lower in the chain or higher in the chain, um, as well as facilities to actually edit the HTML and CSS um, interactively and then save your changes as you go. So you really can actually do all your debugging inside the browser, which is pretty cool. We've done similar stuff for JavaScript, um, including like a very rich debugger, which allows you to set breakpoints, step through statements, uh, inspect variables, stuff like that, and even like output messages to the console, just in case that um, you actually need to make sure that your variables are evolving the way you want them to in the course of a execution path. And then lastly, I actually want to spend a little bit of time on this slide because we provided very easy facilities to go through and debug compatibility bugs. Um, IE is a little bit unique in most browsers insofar as we have this notion of compatibility. And we kind of ship every version of IE with this, this mantra of do not break the web, right? And, uh, which is the ideal case. And to facilitate that, we have these, these two notions of browser mode and document mode. And browser mode is something that uh, controls the user agent string, the version vector if you're doing conditional comments, um, the default document mode uh, for the page. And then we also have a notion of document mode, which is uh, kind of, if you have an API that behaved differently in the old days versus the new days, um, document mode is, controls how exactly it's going to behave, right? It says we want IE's object model to behave like IE8, IE7, quirks, way the hell back, you know, whatever it is. And um, that's sort of how we allow developers to make sure that they code against one version of IE and that 
hopefully, it works against that version of IE. So I want to do a demo real fast of something that I wrote for the IE team. Um, if we can switch monitors to, what's that? Oh, okay. Um, which one's that? Okay. There we go, okay. Um, so this is actually a demo that I wrote for the IE team going into the, um, the Mix conference. And I promise I'm not actually gonna show off the t-shirt designer demo, but just for the record, it is kinda cool. Um, if I wanted to like draw you know, an Internet Explorer E or something like that, this is all in SVG and all of that. It's pretty sweet stuff, I'm not gonna lie about that. Um, so in the course of writing up this demo, um, if you look to the right over there, I sort of had this DOM viewer kind of thing, and it just does a recursive step through the entire like document object model of the page, and it says, I have a div, I have, uh, well, you can see some namespaced sort of uh, elements in there too, or a span or whatever, and then it sort of structurally, by the way, those, uh, those nice curved little things to the left, those are just borders, 10 pixels wide using border radius. Um, some of the graphic stuff we've done uh, with CSS3 or SVG is pretty awesome. But um, my scenario was, I want to go through and make sure that that little minus there, that little thing that sort of says, hey, click me so I can collapse, um, actually worked in IE. And to do that, I needed to make sure that I had my styles right. So I went in here, and um, um, you can see that something like this, this is my container for my overall like DOM viewer kind of element. Um, I have all my CSS styles to the right, and I can just say what style is applying to my element at any given point in time. And what's cool about this is you can see that some of them are like crossed out, which says, oh, I specified a style somewhere, but it got overruled by something lower in the chain. And then I can go through and actually iterate on this stuff um, pretty interactively. Like if I wanted to uncheck some of these things and make sure that they, uh, they worked the way I thought they did, um, it would be pretty easy to do that. We're getting some feedback, aren't we? Um, so that's pretty cool stuff. And um, this like totally made my life easy. This is why I was excited to talk about the dev tools. The fact that I was able to go in, just work on my elements in real time and say, I need to make sure that this is, uh, is positioned the way I want it to be, that it has sort of the, um, the overflow, uh, overflow none characteristics that I want of an element, uh, so it doesn't like actually break the container when I minimize the screen, stuff of that nature. And it worked really well for me. So um, these are the kinds of things you can do and you can see our, our uh, Trident model pretty well. So then going back, um, We have another piece of the IE8 dev tools that you can actually use.